Testing, testing, one, two, three. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. It is a Monday morning and we are back. We're back. I've been off for a week, more, more than a week. We had the new year. We had a good time. And then we took a family vacation. I went on a family vacation, and so I missed all last week. Missed you guys, actually. I did, I did, believe it or not. But it was a good break. Sometimes it's good to take a break and get away. But now we're going to come back, hit it hard, and take a look at the new markets and see what's going on. We've had a big fall since January. Look at that. These are the daily charts. Look at all the daily charts on here. Let's bring this full screen. And... uh Boy, the last one, two, three, four, five this whole week since uh, the new year, the market's kind of tanked a little bit, hasn't it? So what do we see here on the daily chart? Let's first of all look at the NASDAQ. That NASDAQ has come back down and touched the previous high. If we slide over here, that line is that previous high that we've been watching, keeping our eye on. And this is pretty common. This is stuff that we generally see. So you guys who have had a little experience with this, you know that we look at previous highs and then we look for markets to break through those previous highs and then return to those numbers, right? That's called support and resistance. So at this point right here in time, that was a resistance point. It broke through resistance, rallied up, turned around, comes right back down and calls resistance becomes support. All right. And that resistance line, the reason it's there is because it was a previous high. So previous high is resistance. We break through the previous high, resistance becomes support. So now on the NASDAQ, we will look for this market to kind of dance around in here a little bit. Doesn't necessarily mean it can't break down through it a little bit more. Certainly can. Markets can do anything they want, but we generally look for four bars, right? We look for four bars on the one minute chart. So why not look for four bars on the daily chart? We can still look for that four bar rally, that four bar play. One, two, three, four. And now we're getting a higher low. Is it going to bounce off of this and rally and turn and start to go back up a little bit? Give us a little ABC pattern. Now, here's a couple things we could look for. We could see it come back up, test what? Resistance, right? Which would be this high now. So it could come back up, test resistance, and then it could flush. Oh, got the wrong tool. Let's see. What am I doing here? And then it would flush like this. So then we'd see a flush and we could see that come in. And that would give us a nice little head and shoulders formation to the downside, or obviously it could continue to break up, test that resistance, break through and move up and then come down and test support once again like that. So there's a number of things it could do going into the future, right? Of course, that's going to be determined by the fundamentals of the market. All right, market's getting ready to open here. What have we got? We've got uh, two minutes until the market's open. And that's a little analysis just on the NASDAQ. We're going to see basically the same, same on the... Uh, other markets. This is our Russell over here. And you can see the Russell. There's our resistance point. And if we slide that back, this market's already broke through and come back and broke way below it. So what are we testing in here? We got another little area of support or resistance right in here, which then becomes support. And that's where we're at right now. So we're down here testing this, this next level of support. We'll probably, we usually get a little bounce off of support. All right. So we look for a possible little bounce down in here. And um, let's jump over to our one-minute chart. We'll just watch the, the morning bell take off. Morning bell's getting ready to run here. 29, and what have we got? 20 seconds. All right, 20 seconds, and the bell's going to ring. So have we got anything going right now? Have we put anything on before the morning bell? Nope, land's just barely getting back into the swing of things. Our goal today is just to get green. See if we can put a little green on the table. <clears throat> All right. Is that it? There it goes. There's the morning bell. Let's see where this thing flops around a little bit. We're going to watch it flop around. This Russell down here in the bottom left-hand corner, that's the one we're going to trade manually, probably. Okay, we're going to trade that one manually. That's the uh, range bar six. So each bar will not create a new bar until the market moves a minimum of six moves, six, six minimum moves, right? So that's what we're watching there. And you can see it's starting to rally. You can see a nice little drive down in here. We draw that little trend line. It's breaking, breaking long. So we were a little bit bullish on the market, right? A lot of these markets were on the daily chart, testing the bouncing off of support. 
So we're looking for a little bit of a rally. Of course, we generally get a little flush rally or a little fall quick right out of the opening gate. Today, we're not going to try and jump on top of that. We're going to watch that for just a second and see what happens. We do need to look at our news. We got nothing today on the news. Look at this news. The only thing we got is at 1030 today, my time, I'm in mountain time. So 1030 today, we got uh, the Fed speaking. So at 1030, we'll be mindful of that. Should move the market just a little bit. Uh, not going to make any interest rate changes or anything like that, but <clears throat> we will watch for a little bit of a uh, movement in the markets there. Okay, the Russell is starting to flush back down. The Dow, we've also got it set to a range bar six. The 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 Nasdaq, we have it set to the range bar fifty. Now we're looking on this one. We're looking at the just the bulls and bears. So I'm going to just trade the bulls and bears in the autopilot. Now I've been doing last week before we kind of took our hiatus um we were doing a little bit of options on the s p we were day trading the uh dow and the russell ourselves manually and then we were letting the autopilot trade the nasdaq so let's do that again let's come in here and we're going to do a nasdaq let's do the nasdaq scalp only this time instead of running the nasdaq scalp with the atr which is what we were doing last time we're just going to run the bulls and bears so I'm going to set this up. So we got the bulls and bears and we're going to do a quantity two, and we're just going to do a scalping strategy. All right. We're not, well, yeah, we'll just, <clears throat> let's just scalp. All right. We're going to just run a scalping strategy. Just try to get a little green on the board today. So we're going to come in here. We're going to do market order. I'm not going to do any of this thrust bar signal preventer because it's all on a range bar. We don't need any of that. We're going to trade the trend of the NASDAQ. So the same market range bar 50. We're going to trade the trend of the, no, we're not going to trade the trend. We're going to trade long and short because we're just going to use the oh no we need to have a trend because i don't want to trade the counter trends um we don't have a trend let's let's just trade long and short okay just do that for now we're going to come in here we're going to set our stop at a hundred and then we're going to jump that stop immediately to the blue light system and then we're going to set a limit in here at 110. We're going to use David Duty's 22. Next on primary signal, longs and shorts. All right. We should probably have a trend, some sort of a trend tool in there. Maybe we could put an auto and just take the trend. But for now, we'll just do both longs and shorts. But that means on our counter trend, we're going to lose money. I don't really want to do that. Oh, well, we'll start it for now. And uh, we'll come maybe swing back around and, and adjust that later. Let's see how it goes. And then I'm going to just move it out of the way. We're just going to grab that and move it over here. Now, on the options, we've been putting options on the S&P. And the market's starting to rally a little bit. We're expecting a little bit of a rally. We could come in here and let's just price a zero DTE out. We're going to price one in here. Where are we at? $400. The market's a little, uh, I don't want to do that. That's a little expensive. Let's go look and see on our S&P option for the day. We just do a zero DTE option. Let's look at the option chain. And what I'm really interested in right now is I want to see what the theoretical value of these things are. Oh, the theoretical value, look at that, is $463 at the money and we're getting it for $400 for a long position. That means it's probably bearish. <clears throat> Let's see, we got um, open interest is seven. We got volume is 3,200 on those buy, on those calls. We got 1,000, that's where it was uh, on the open. So 1,000 volume on the open. Or is that 11,000 volume on the open? So we got 11,000 volume on the open. And those guys are making money right now. So it's gone from 862 to 944. So those guys are making about 100 bucks on their options already. So let's see. Uh, do we want to still be long on that call? I'm going to wait for a minute on the call. All right. Maybe we'll put a put on. I want to see it come up. Maybe we'll get a yellow arrow. We'll drop, look for the retracement, maybe back down to the VWAP or something. All right. So the Dow on that range, look at that Dow. That's really sweet. Starting to move higher. I'm going to hold off on the, I'm letting the NASDAQ trade. That one's already on autopilot. We'll just watch a little bit over here. We're above the Viva BAP. We're above, I've got the, on the range bar Russell, you can see I'm looking for a trend. I've got it set to a longer term time frame, not so, quite so tight. 
So I'm going to come in here, and what I wanted is a continuation. There we go. There's our continuation. I'm a little slow to the uptick, but I want to go from red to green, the up arrow. Okay, so we had the up arrow, the up arrow, and then from red to green. So just going, trying to take a little red to green, look for it to continue higher. I put the stop on the uh, ATR and looking for it to rally higher, but it's not doing it. We're going to look like so we're going to get stopped out with a loss, and sure enough. I was looking for that market to continue up that red, that green trend, and it failed on us. So it's coming back down. Now we're in a downtrend. Well, that kind of sucks. Very first trade out of the day. We get our handy handed to us. Okay. Well, Lane, you didn't do anything wrong. Keep telling yourself you didn't do anything wrong. You're looking for the ABC continuation. And this market was just too weak for us. It just didn't follow through and continue up the trend. <clears throat> so that was our first attempt to try and get in. There's our second attempt, bouncing off the VWAP. Come on, is it going to go one more time? Bounce off the VWAP and rally? <clears throat> or is it going to break lower? We're in the downtrend, so I should actually only be looking for a short position, but it's got the VWAP right there, so we're going to hang on to that one just a second and wait and see what it does with the VWAP. Very first trade out of the gate, $95 down. What the heck? My gosh, I hate it when I start a whole new, whole new day, whole new week, a whole new series. Look at that, first of the year, first trade of the year. I hope that's not a... Omen. You guys believe in omens? Look at it fall. Lan, you should have just taken the arrow. I don't know why you don't just take the arrows. I've heard enough of that. I've heard enough of that. Just take the arrows. Let's tune this thing in a little bit. We're going to put it a 1.5. All right, here we go. Who's in the house? Let's come over and say hi to a few people. We got a few people come in. Camille, great to see you. Glad to have you in class. Good to see you. We got Bruce. Bruce R. Good morning, Bruce. We've got uh, Gary Thomas. Great to see you, Gary. We've got uh, Kirk Schwartz. Happy New Year, folks. Great to see you. Glad to have everybody back. Look at those silly market over here. got it. Look at the Dow drop. There was a little shelf right there, right after the arrow. There was our signal. That was our signal. Down arrow, first red, green to red, right there. Look, we did it here, too. I, I thought about that one and then hesitated and didn't do it. <coughs> and then that second one right there, down arrow. Land, why aren't you paying attention? Down arrow, green bar. All right. We got Larry McIntosh in the house. Nice to have you, Larry. David, L John David Lundberg. John, I got your email. It was a long one. I haven't had a chance to answer it thoroughly yet, so I will get to that this afternoon. You'll hear from me. And uh, Matt Baker. Matt, glad to see you in class. It's good to see you. Glad to have you along for the ride. We're going from Red to green. What are we doing down here? It's kind of just dancing around a little bit. Matt, what are you going to do? Welcome back. Thank you very much, Matt. We're going to see if we can't do something here. Try and get get green. Uh, we're working on a... My first trade, Matt, was bad. I took the first trade out of the gate. I was looking for a continuation of the trend, and it failed on me, and I took a $95 loss right out of the gate. The very first trade. So now I'm being a little cautious here, trying to wait for the market to make a decision. It's going sideways here on the Russell. It's going sideways here on the Dow. We got a little shelf here going on with that Dow. Notice that pattern. That pattern's done that twice now where we've come in here and we've had the, the pullback little shelf, the, the pullback, the green bars, a couple little drops, a little green bar right there, a little single green bar. Now so we got that same pattern right here. A little pullback, single green bar, and then it dropped again. Now, this one had a nice continuation. It continued nicely down. This one is hesitating. We're getting that little 
another little shelf right here. Man, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm sitting on my hands. Just give me a second. You're going to take a trade? Huh? Green to red, land. Green to red. You're going to do it? Huh? 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 Oh, you're going to be mad if it goes, and you're going to be mad. Oh, am I going to be mad? Yeah, it's breaking the low. Why didn't you hit it, land? Why didn't you hit it? Why didn't you just hit it? Hit it. Take it. Go. It's going to fall. Go. Take it. Ah! Ah! Yeah, but it's already gone three bars. Yeah, but it's trying to break below the low. Take it. Take it. Get in. Why aren't you in? Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. No short. Oh, God. Suck at this, land. Look at that market fall. It's breaking right there at that area of support. I'm not sure it's going to hold through there. Worried it might pop back. We've already had four, five, six, but down one, two, three, four, five, six bars down. Broke through the resistance. It's going to go. You know it's going to go. It's going to fall. Bearish, bearish. Everything's bearish. All right. Options. Zero DTE. Buy a put. At the money. Market into that baby. All right. We're short. Short the S&P with an option. Now watch it take off and go to the moon. Why? Because land went short. That's why. All right. But that's got all day long. We're going to let that sit there for a minute. And we're going to see what it does. Oh, there's a nice little shelf right up here. Now I'm ready to go short on the Dow. Here we go. Oh, get on the right tab. Land. Oh, you missed it again. You were so slow. Look, you missed the drop. You looked at it. You said it. You were going to do it. And then you were on the wrong tab. You're still over here on the options tab. Then you are a comedy of errors. Look, the NASDAQ. That baby is rolling through. That had the follow through that you're looking for on the Russell. Nice long uptrend, little counter trend, nice long uptrend, little ABC pattern. That's beautiful. You're going to get a counter trend right here, Lan, and it's going to take a short position, and then you're going to get a third drive. You're going to get your hiney handed to you one more time. Watch this. Oh, well, I'm making money on the S&P. $7. Woohoo! Okay, here we go. Dow, oh, that was that trade you were going to take, Lan, and you were too slow. I told you to get in, and you didn't do it anyway. Well, I was waited too long. I thought I missed it. I looked at it, and I thought it might give a little pullback. I missed that drop right there. Doggone it. Matt, I'm sure you got it. You're probably paying more attention than I am. Ugh. I have moved my Russell. My Russell is over here in the right window now. Because I'm trading the NASDAQ with the autopilot. It hasn't taken a trade yet. That green line right there is telling us that's where the autopilot started trading. So it's not done anything yet. It's just looking for an arrow. It's going to wait. And then it's a scalp strategy. So it's only going to take 22 points out of the NASDAQ. All right. Let's go. Land. Look at this rain. Russell, Dow, everything is making money. And you're sitting here on a $95 loss. You haven't done a damn thing all morning. What the heck is going on with you? Yeah, I'm a little rusty today. I've been off for a week. I blame it on the fact that I'm rusty. Oh, now look at this. I'm getting a getting a Fibonacci bow tie. Look at that. Perfect little bow tie. Come back here, tie it off. Come back here, hitting resistance of the previous low. That's what that's called. So that market should fall. Len, why aren't you using QOCO3? Come on, what, what are we doing here? A little bit of a pullback. That's a follow-through to the long side, isn't it? That's an arrow. That's a little tiny. That's what we look for. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> there it goes, breaking above the high. I don't know if it's going to follow through. Is it going to follow through? There it goes. There's our signal. Oh, my goodness, Lan. It's going to go all the way back to the VWAP, and you're going to miss it. No, it's not going to go to the VWAP. It's going to come up here and test this previous high. And then it's going to turn, and it's going to fall once again and give me another opportunity to take a short position in this downtrend. Well, then get in right now. No, not yet. Now. Well, not yet. Hold on. Hold on. There it is. Touch the previous high. It's going to break through. We got one more up there. 
It's going to go back to the VWAP land. No, it's not. It's not. It's going to come right there to that resistance and turn around and fall. Well, then get in. If you're going to be so sure of that, well, hold on, hold, 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 your, hold your horses. I'm ready. Hovering my mouse. All right, we'll take the first. It's going to fall again. Come on, watch this. Take two then. <clears throat> if you're so sure, put a third one on. Put a third one on. All right, all right. Don't yell at me. Take a quick one off. Scalp and trail, land. Scalp and trail. Scalp and trail, land. All three of your stops are in the same spot? Well, for now, they are. They're all sitting there on that yellow dot. Bring it full screen. I can't see it. Okay. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm looking for it to fall again. It's kind of doing this little snaky thing. Let's see if it'll continue the snaky down. But you're losing money already. It's already come back. It's not going to go all down. It's going to go up back up to the VWAP. All right. Well, if it goes back, we'll get stopped out again. This time with three. We're going to really, that's going to be really painful for us. Scalp and trail land. Just, oh my goodness. You suck at this. Look, I told you it was going to go back up to the VWAP. I told you it was going to go to the VWAP. Why'd you take a short position? <sighs> Look, now you're down. You're down again. You took three. Co Why'd you take three contracts on that? Yeah. What were you so confident on that fall for? Why'd you go three contracts? I told you it was going to go to the VWAP. You should have taken three contracts to the VWAPs, what you should have done. Look, it's testing this previous high right now. It's hitting resistance. Yeah, but it's going to just break right through it and go back to the VWAP. <clears throat> well, I don't think so. I think it's going to hit that, and it's going to turn, and it's going to fall again. It's going to come in here, and we're going to get a fall out of here. It's not going to go all the way back to the VWAP. Yes, it is going to go all the way back to the VWAP, and you're going to sit here and watch it go with an arrow to the upside. Look at that. There's that arrow, and it's going to go all the way, just like I told you it was going to do. Why would you take a big short? It's an ABC land. It's an ABC. One, two, three. ABC. I told you. I told you. Why would you go three short? It's going to go short again. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Why'd you go in with two? It's going to get a pullback right here. It's just going to make that two little red bars, and it's going to turn and rally and go back up again. It's in an uptrend land. Why are you counter-trending? You know better than that. You're in an uptrend. Don't take short positions in an uptrend. Look, you got the up arrow. This is just a counter-trend. You're looking for reversals, and that's a dangerous thing to do. Why are you trading the reversals? You know, trends are the trend is your friend until it bends or ends. Quit trying to take the counter trend reversal. You're going to get your hiney hand to you once again. Look, you even did it with two. <clears throat> I know, I know. Scalp and trail land, scalp and trail. Scalp and trail, scalp and trail. I can't scalp and trail. Why not? Because I'm underwater right now. I have to mitigate. I have to do a 275 mitigation. You're not going to get 275 out of this thing. You'll be lucky to get half of it. You ought to just take half of it off. Well, I'll just bring my stop to break even then, and we'll just let it run and see where it goes. How's that? All right. That's what you want to do. I got to mitigate. It's coming down and testing this previous low right here. That's right where my 275 profit is to get. Look, you had almost all of it, and it's coming right. That's that's just the way you trade, Lan. You had almost all. You should have just taken it right there. Well, I thought it was coming down. It... Should have taken half of it, Lan. Should have at least taken half of it. Got some of it back. Well, I thought we were that close. We only had to have one more, but you should have brought your stop in. Why didn't you stop? Why'd you leave your stop at break even? You should have trailed it across those flat tops. You'd at least had been closer. Didn't they? Look, you totally wasted that whole opportunity. You didn't trail close enough. You should have just. Oh. 
what the heck are you thinking? Well, I thought it was going to go on me. I thought we were didn't think it was going to come all the way back to the VWAP. We got a previous high right here, right at the VWAP. So we're going to go up there and touch it. We got flat bottoms, flat bottoms, flat bottom girls right there. A whole bunch of green flat bottoms. There it is. Touch that blue line, just like you said it was going to do. It'll listen to you. Can't believe that. I told you that blue line is like a rubber band. It pulls the market back to it every single day. It just goes back to that stupid blue line every single time. All right, let's go see what we're doing. Every Oh, look, even your S&P is losing money. You suck at this, Lan. Why in the heck are you even trying to make money? You should go and drink tea on the couch and you'd do better to You'd be better off if you'd have just gone and drank tea on the couch today. <clears throat> Are you going to have a red day? No, I've still got a half an hour. <clears throat> well, the S&P is rallying for you on your put option. What made you think you should buy a put option today anyway? Well, because on the daily chart, all the charts were in a downtrend. Yes, but they were down four bars, and so is now time for an up bar. It's the rally bar after four down bars. And look, it's in a natural uptrend. Look, just nice, big, long, natural uptrend. Okay, look at the Dow flush. The Dow's getting ready to flush. Does so that mean that the Russell's going to flush too? Not necessarily. Little cousin Russell down here likes to do his own thing. There it is, land. Take it. Take another short. Let's wait and see if it wants to bounce. See if it comes up. Give us a little trend. If it breaks one more down, we'll go take the next down. Why are you going down? This market is bullish. It's not going down. Well, I'm trailing this time. I'm not just going in with a market order. So it's got to break and break, prove lower. And then I think that's a little shelf right there. Doesn't it look like a little shelf to you, Matt? <laughs> now it's got to drop out of that shelf. There's our first ABC. We're in a downtrend. That's that's an A setup, Land. How come you didn't take two? Oh. Quit yelling at me. It's not going to go down. It's bullish. This market is bullish. Why do you keep trying to go up or down when the market's... I got a down arrow, but that's a counter trend arrow. That's a counter trend arrow. Long set of dots, short set of dots. Long set of dots. You keep going for those reversals. Those reversals are really hard to catch. Stop chasing the reversals. You know. All right, where are we going to be? You got $270 you got to get. Put that at 270. 270. Oh, it's already almost there. Two, put it at 280. It's not going to go that far. Well, I'm going to let it trail this time. You've only got one trailing stop. Where are you going to put your other one? I'm going to trail my other one. The price bar's back. Oh, it just took it off. Well, that didn't do you any good. You only made like 20 bucks. Well, we'll try and trail to another short here then. If it wants to give us a little ABC, another little shelf here. <clears throat> the market's slowing down and the trends aren't as long. It's going to be tough to recover at this point. Okay, take another short off this next little shelf. We need it to fall, shelf. Come on, shelf. I don't think you've got your limit order at the right spot. You're short two, you're only calculating one. So we're going to come in here at our OCO. Recalculate 217 is our recovery land right there. It's only got to come down to there. That's, uh, but you got a resistance point right here. <clears throat> Why is your stop way up there? Because I haven't told it what to do yet. Edit. Okay. Come on. We got to go. Let's trail the yellow dots. That's the ATR. Hit OK. Now what? Stalling out on you again already? Look. You can't catch a break today, can you? You stopped out with another loss. There it goes. 
Come on, fall, baby. You don't have to fall very far. Just give me a little break here. Give me a little break. You got a resistance point right there. You're going to try and take a profit at that resistance point? I could scalp and trail one. I could scalp one off right there at that, res that, that area of support. But look how close it is to my break even. It's right there. But it's not going to break through that and go down and touch. Yes, it is. It's going to hit it. Take one right now, Land. Take one. At least take some off. You're hitting the support. Why didn't you take it when it was there? I told you to take some off. Okay, I took some off. Yeah. Oh, you're really good at this. You should have taken it off when it touched that white line. What in the heck are you doing? Okay. Why are you long? Why are you long? Because I took one off. And I still had my, oh, I still had my two trailing stops and I took one off manually. Well, that was a stupid mistake. Well, maybe not. Maybe we'll make money on it. Hold it right there. Let it go. It was a reversal. Accidental reversal is going to make you money, Lance. I hate it when you make money accidentally. That you're getting paid for doing a stupid thing. Well, I'm going to take it. How long are you? Just quantity one, two, ten. Ah. What's it going to do? It's coming back against you. What are you going to do, Lan? Oh. Still down 65. What the heck is going on here? I don't like what I see. What do you see you don't like? I don't like that that buy sell signal is not sticking with my red line there. My last trade. What the heck is going on there? Let's go look at the S&P while that settles down a little. S&P rallying, breaking above the previous high. Are you going to take a long land? Are you going to hedge your... Your option. We could take a long here and hedge the option, put us into a neutral position. But it's not really neutral. Why? Because the delta of the option is 0.82. It's pretty close. 20% off of a hedge. But you know, as soon as you hedge, it's going to start falling. Okay, we put on a hedge. So if it starts to go long, we're not going to start making as much on the long position as we're losing on the on the hedge. We're actually going to make a little more, 10% more on the long than we're going to lose on the option because the, the option's delta is 82. That's a two-minute chart? Yeah, that's a two-minute chart. <clears throat> Where's your stop? I haven't got one in yet. I'm just watching it for a second, trying to hedge a little. Market starts to rally. Okay, we're making as much on our long position as we're losing on our option. It's called a hedge. It's actually now at this point, it's kind of what I call a soft stop. So I have a long position in the market and I have a put option. So this put option is actually my. In this case, if we would have put them on at the same time, that'd be my stop, my soft stop. So the market could fluctuate around in there because if it falls, you're going to start losing money on your contract, but you start making it on your put option. So we're in a hedge right now. Starts to rally.
What are you going to do, Lan? What are you going to do? You're going to watch it for a second. Let's just watch it for a second. I don't want it to drop below my hedge. So I put a stop in there at the break even point on the hedge. And why don't we just tell it at it? We'll just trail that up. We'll just say trail price bars back. We'll just trail one price bar back on that hedge just to keep it. Why? Oh, it's still a break even. It's just going to stop me out of break even. Market's not going to rally. So I just took the hedge off as the market turns and falls again. Coming down, touching the low of that bar, you put the hedge back on in anticipation of a continuation of the uptrend. Pulled back, pulled back. We'll put our stop. Underneath that bar. If it breaks a low, we don't want to be in it anyway. To the long side. It's just chopping, chopping, chopping. Probably end up losing more money on our trying to. The, I, I usually oftentimes, the hedging is hard. <laughs> Sometimes I end up losing more money just trying to hedge than I do lose on the option. I can mitigate the option later off, later in the afternoon. But we'll play with the hedge here just a little bit. Come on. What are you going to do? So, well, you put an order in, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to tease you, frustrate you. Make you make a stupid decision. Well, <clears throat> completely died on us right there, didn't it? Come on, break higher. There we go. But if it breaks higher, Lan, aren't you losing money on your option? Yes, but I'm making more money on my long position than I'm losing on my option. So the option has a delta of 84, which means it's making 80, 86 at this point, 84, 85. So it's making 85% of the money that I'm making on. It's losing 85% of the money I'm making on the long position. So I'm actually, even though I'm long on the long position and short on the put option, I'm actually making... 10% more on the long 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 position than I'm losing on the short position. It's called a hedge. So optimally, the idea would be, right, to have this thing rally up and then you turn around and take that hedge off as you try and time it so that when the market turns starts to fall, you start making money on your short put or on your long put. And then um you captured the the difference of the of the loss and then you then you re recover it on the on the as the market falls on the put take it off land quick take it take it take it you can put it back on take it at the peak okay we'll take it up here at the peak in case it wants to fall back Lock in a little hedge. There we go. We took our hedge off. So that put us up 122 in the green, recovered our daily trades, our trading on the, but now we've got $200 down. So we're still down a hundred bucks. So all we did was protect our hedge at that point. Now we want to see the market fall. And then that put option would become more profitable. So every penny on the recovery at this point, we could put the hedge back on, but we want to see it pull back a little bit. 
Just take off the lid. Just get rid of the put option, man. Just get rid of the put option. We might do that too. Just wait for a second. Don't, don't, no, no hurry. No hurry. Don't make a lot of stupid decisions. Let's just wait for a second. See what it does. Wants to go, Lynn. It wants to go. It's going to go without you. One, two, three, four, five, six bars. We got a little three bar rally with a little pullback. Two bar rally. We did a four bar rally here. One, two, three, four. Four flat bottoms. We may get, and then we did th two flat bottoms. This is not a flat bottom, but it's a green bar. Three, three bar rally, pullback, two bar rally. We're still in the uptrend. We got the arrow here. We've had two red bar pullbacks. One there, one there. We put our hedge on here, rode that up, took the hedge off right up here at the peak. So we did pretty good on pulling the hedge off, but the market's still up there. So it may not be absolutely perfect and catch the very top but we were pretty darn close to it. Now we just need it to turn and give us a little reprieve. Is it going to come back and give us a little reprieve, or is it going to just keep pushing higher? Well, look at some history, land. Look back at the history. Where's our previous high? It's, it's way back there. So we got this high up here. That's where it's going to go test that. Is it going to test that? We got an even number right here, 47.55 right there. Where's another strike? Option strike prices are also pivot points. So where's our strike prices at? Oh, it's sitting right at the strike price right now. Look at that. That's the next price strike. So we went from this strike to this strike. We got a previous, and then we got another strike right there. <clears throat> That's an important lesson. Markets use option strike prices as areas of support and resistance. So even if you're not going to trade options, you should have the options strike prices set on your on your screen so you know where these areas of support and resistance are okay because markets will go they like to push up to these strike prices land why do they push up to the strike prices what does that have anything to do with it because somebody sells you these options well who sells them to you usually it's the big banks and the market makers and the controllers of the of these Charts, whoever's making the markets rise and fall. They're usually the ones who are selling them to you. So if they sell them to you and you buy them and you start making money, they're losing money. So that pisses them off. So they try and push the market to these different areas of, oh, here you go again with your conspiracy theories, land. How many times have we seen conspiracy theories actually play out and be true? All the time. These guys manipulate these markets. I know you don't want to believe it, but they do. They've got deep pockets, and this is not very far for them. They don't care. They can push the market up a little bit to scare you out of your position so that they don't lose money. That's why these markets jump between these option strike prices. Because the guy who sold you that's losing money if it goes up. If you buy it and he's losing money. And he's got big, deep pockets, and he can come in here and push the market down and up and down just a little bit. And he's not just your options. Like, why Why would he do that for one option? He's not. Look down here. He's doing it for 4,307 options. So you think that's not worth it for him to push it up there and scare you out of those positions? You bet your tiny little booty it would. If they got the ability to push those markets around and scare you out of your position, they're going to do it. That's why these strike prices are such important turning points and pivot points. That's why markets jump between option strike prices because they're pushing the markets around to try and scare you out of your option position. Yeah, but there's just as many on the other side. I know. That's why they make the market go up and down and up and down, scare you in, scare you out, scare you in, scare you out, and take your money. 
So by realizing that that actually does happen, you can play against it a little bit. Now, is it perfect? Does it work every time? No. And sometimes they lose money too. But they got deeper pockets than we do. And I got a whole story I want to tell you at some point about Level three data, level three data. What's level three data, Lan? I got level two over here on the dome. I can see the level two. What's level three? Exactly. What's level three? Level three is the data that you don't get to see. It's invisible. Well, I like to watch level two because I can see where all the support and resistance is and where everybody's big positions are. Exactly. Exactly. Big banks, big hedge funds, they call you rat. That, that's called rat bait. All right. So they'll put a big position up there and everybody looks at that on the level two and they say, oh, that's where all the support. Is. That's where all the liquidity is. Look at all that liquidity up there. The market's going to go to liquidity. So I'm going to buy. And so you buy because that's where liquidity is because you think the market's going to go to liquidity. And you can't see any of the orders that are on level three. So they put a lot of liquidity. So retail traders will push the market up to liquidity. And then as soon as it gets up there, there have got hidden orders to take short positions up there. You can't see them because they're on level three. And then you just see their level two orders up there, the liquidity. So you push it up there, buy it. It goes up there. Yeah, it goes up there. But then you're anticipating that some big buyer is going to buy there and push it even higher. But actually what they do is they yank that one off and you they sell to you on a hidden order that you can't see and then they make money as the market flushes and they just take all your orders level two is kind of you got to be careful with level two level two is it's a mouse trap and that's the rat bait they're just putting rat bait in there that's why i don't pay much attention to level two and all the quantity of those that are sitting up there because half of them are fake and they're just going to pull them off they're not going to they don't want them to get filled they're taking short positions as you're building the market up to them they just put that up there as rat bait to get you to push the market up. And then when you push the market up, they take short positions on level three that you can't see and you don't see all the short positions and then flush the market, flush the market. And they pull their liquidity off and then they put it down at the bottom. And then all the, oh, look at all the liquidity down there. We're going to push the market down and they're short. So they've got all the short positions and all the liquidity is the bottom. All the retail traders push the market down for them. That's how it works. I know it's conspiracy theory. You don't believe me. It's okay. You don't have to believe me. Where did you hear that, Lan? Where do you think I heard it? I think I made that up. You and your conspiracy theories. All right, here we come. We're coming back a little bit. 122 down 120. So we're at break even. So our edge worked. We're at break even right now. Ah, we're up 20 bucks. So that hedge was a good, good hedge. So what should we do? Should we take it off and just whew, wipe the sweat off our brow and say we made it? We got it back, we're back to zero. Yeah, we could do that, but that's no fun. Let's go back here and see if our bid ask has calmed down a little bit. Calm down, bid ask. All right, what are we doing over here on the Russell? Let's take a look at the Russell. We're in a downtrend. Got the down arrow. Making a shelf. Making a shelf. Man, man, maybe that's a reversal. Maybe you should go long on that. Well, I'm not going to go long on it. If it wants to be a reversal, we'll wait for it to go up, create a little pullback, little flag formation. Then we could take the next up. But I don't want to take the first up, especially if we're in a down. We're in a down. So this is a shelf. So we'll take the first red bar as soon as it makes a red bar. Well, why don't you put a trailing stop in there at underneath those flat bottoms? I could do that. You're on the wrong tab again, Lan. It's hitting our resistance. You took one short. Why don't you take two? Because I'm. don't tell me what to do. Look at that. I already got stopped out. Yeah. Wait for the red bar, Lan. Look, you're in the up arrow. Why'd you take short on the up arrow? I, it was a new first low. Wait for the red bar. 
Wait for the you're in an uptrend though. You have to no. Oh, why don't you just take the arrow? Why don't you just take the arrows? Crossing the yellow dots. Well, I thought I would take the first break below the green bar. These are too sensitive. You're on range bar six. You have to be careful. You can't really do that. You have to wait for the color change. All right. Okay, we're back in the down arrow. Why didn't you take the short on the down arrow? Because this is a long up right here, and this is a counter trend right here. So we should take the first green, right? A, B, C, D, land, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. <clears throat> Down arrow. That's a counter trend down arrow. Longer trend. Long set of dots, short set of dots. Long set of dots. It's just whether we're going to get the long set of dots or not. Counter trend land. You've got a little shelf right there. Are you going to take the short? No, because it's just wandering sideways. Down trend. But it's a down arrow. Red bars, down arrow. Yes, but it's long set of dots up. Counter trend. Long set of dots up. I don't trust the down right now. Where's the VWAP? It's left us long below. VWAP's down here. Maybe it's going to come back to the VWAP. Mm -hmm. Quit telling me what to do. Look, you said it was going to be A, B, C, D. Why didn't you take it? As it broke that green land, at least take the arrow. There's the arrow. Because we're up here with all time new highs. This is all the highs, 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 highs. Let's see if it's going to go up and test the high. Lots of resistance right there. It's four green bars. What are you going to do? Four green bars. Four flat bottom green bars. That's what you look for. Four bottom flat green bars. I know, I know, I see it. Yellow arrow land, yellow arrow. Breaking above the previous high right now. Take the break. Take the break above the previous high. Why don't you take the break above the previous high? Eight breaks above previous highs. Yeah, but breaks above previous highs make money. Yeah, but they also sometimes flush, come back down, and then go on a second try. I like to generally wait and see if they won't push up and take the second, not the first. The first breakout oftentimes fails. Yeah, but I've seen it go through and just take off and go to the moon, too. A lot. I know. I know. But I'm already down some, so I can't can't be taking bad trades. I have to be careful. See, I told you. Goes up and hits those previous highs, and you think that's where you want to buy, and it flushes. I see it do that all the time, so I don't. that's why I don't like to take previous highs. Yeah, but how many times have you seen it break through a previous high and go to the moon? Well, I know it does that too. Market can do whatever the heck it wants. There it goes. Now it's going. That's your second second chance, land. Go, 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 go. Put at least. Oh, you got in late. Look at the. Why in the heck are we having problems with the? I can't. You got in way late on that one. What in the heck were you? Bid ask were wonky on me. I don't like it now. I got in late. It's going, land. Let it go. Just put your stop in there. Just put it a break even. If it comes back, you get out. You're too slow. Look at the difference between the bid and the ask and the buy line. What the heck is going on? I hate it when that happens. Okay. We're going to trail... Trail the ATR. Ugh, these range bars are too small. We got to go to larger range bars. Just move too fast. Range bar six too small time frame. We got to go to we got to go to larger time frame. Well, did you make any money? You got a Russell pending something. What the heck? Get rid of my stop that's sitting in there.
Ugh, this is going too fast. Let's slow it down. Let's go to... We got range bar 50. We got range bar 6. Let's bring this up to 10. Maybe 10 is too slow. We'll see. That's a little better. Let's go in here. Price bars, candles. That's a little better. We're not going so fast. That fixed our problem with the buy sell lines. We were just going too fast. Too fast. Maybe we can slow it back down this afternoon, but right now, this morning session, that's just too fast. What's a one minute chart look like? Let's look at a one minute chart. Russell, one minute. Trading those range bars, sometimes it's a little, they're a little tough. They go fast. It's a one minute chart. Let's get rid of this for a second. Chart overlay bulls and bears. Come down here. You can't say I haven't been trading. I oftentimes sit on my hands. There's a little counter. Look at that. One little dot. What is this? Holy cow. We should take a long right there, shouldn't we? That's a long. Should we take that long right there? I don't know if I like that. It's a one minute chart long. Let's take it. It's not going to go very far because this is getting up toppy toppy. But we're going to try this one minute long, see if it won't at least go up and test that previous high. Put my stop in. Take a second one, land. Take two. That's eh, not an A1 setup. It's just an A2 setup. Let's go A trail. We're going to trail price bars back. 1.1, 1 1.1, or just one? Eh, we'll just do one. Where are you going to put your limit? I just want to test that previous high. Scalp. Scalp and trail it? No, just get. Oh, you rotten bugger. You knew I was going to do that, didn't you? Now you're going to go. Now you're going to go, you dirty, rotten bugger. You knew I was going to do that. A little wedge formation in here, but it's at the top of this long trend. I don't know if it's going to go up there again. It's not going to go, Lan. Bring your stop in closer just in case. Well, I brought my stop in closer last time, and it came down and stopped me out. Well, now you got it too far away. Okay. Let's move it a little closer just in case. If it doesn't go, just get out. Aren't you the one that says that all the time? It's just decisively move in your favor, then get out? Okay, I got out. Didn't decisively move in my favor twice. Well, then go short. Failed patterns, best pattern. Failed patterns, the best pattern. Failed twice, go short. It's not doing anything. It's not going long or short. It's just sitting here. Russell, one minute. Why are you back to the one minute? Go back to your. Go back to your range bar. More granular, land. It's more granular. You know, granular. I know, but it's not doing anything. It slowed right down. What have you got your options window open for? I don't know. Just left it open. Get rid of it. People can't see. There, take it, land. Take it. First green bar. First green candle. Range bar 10. Range bar 10. First green candle. First green candle. Wait, 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 wait. Get on the right tab. Yeah, but it's... We're in a downtrend. Look, arrow. Yeah, but look, it wants to go up. That's green up, green up, green up, land, green up. Take it, take it, take it. It ain't a trend. 
Yeah, you're gonna get good four good green bars, and then we get a little pullback. Then we'll look for the next one up. I don't want to jump on every little A1. Every little breakout isn't you're gonna get your hiney handed to you if you jump on every single little breakout. Look, this is turning into a it's turning into a, a wedge formation. So that means that our break above here would be our buy right there. See, good thing I didn't take that. Go short, Lane. Go short. No, it's the same thing on the downside. You don't want to take the first breakout. You take the first breakout, you're going to take all these little first breakouts. You're going to get your hiney handed to you. You got to wait. Wait for a trend to start. You got to get good three, four bars before you, you want a good three, four bars, and then the little pullback, and then the continuation. Don't want to try and take all these first little pullbacks all the time because if you do every little breakout every little breakout every little breakout you're going to get your hiney handed to you the market's dead right now it's not doing anything give it a minute we're here at the bottom of the hour it's 8 30 you're going to have a red day on your first day back uh, so it's just that option Look, I'm down 27 off of this stupid sideways thing, trying to take a couple of hits off of it. The option will recover. We got all day on that. I'm not worried about the option. <clears throat> if we can get it back to break even, we'll do a couple of hedges on it if we have to, but I'm more worried about day trading here. We want to have a little, a little green day. Look at that NASDAQ. We haven't taken a single trade on the autopilot NASDAQ. It just went straight up, 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 up on that range 50. That's a range 50. Let's pull that up and look at that for a second. Where'd it go? Range 50. Look at that. That's the bulls and bears. No, it's not. That's just straight up. Those arrows. What are those arrows? Yeah, that's the bulls and bears. Bulls and bears arrows. Oh, you know why? Look over to the settings on the bulls and bears. I, I put it on the settings. I put it on aggressive. So you have traditional. Well, I can't change it while it's autopilot trading. So I set that on aggressive, which is just, that's a straight up red to green moves on the Fibonacci red to green. So it gets, it gets rid of the sweet spot. It just goes right straight off of the 50% ruler. So in the Fibonacci ruler, Fibonacci ruler, you have a sweet spot, right? You have the distance between 61.8 and 38.2. In the bulls and bears, if you turn it on on traditional, you can't do that. The 38.2, it, it, it widens it out, actually. It's probably a little bit more than 38.2, or it might be 38 point. I think what it does is 38.2 on the, on the formula for traditional. On progressive, it actually squeezes that a little closer. And then on aggressive, it gets rid of the sweet spot altogether. There is no sweet spot. It just goes right dead off the 50% level of the Fibonacci ruler. So it's calculating Fibonacci without, I've got it set to aggressive. So it's calculating Fibonacci without the 38.261.8 neutral zone. So that's all I've done. I've turned off the neutral zone. Still the bulls and bears, still Fibonacci, still Elliott wave. It's just not, there's no neutral zone. I took the neutral zone off. Why'd you do that, Lan? Because hmm, I thought it'd be something fun to teach you guys. Do you think anybody learned anything today? Nah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Learned what not to do. Don't buy put options when the market's going up. Ah, well, how are you supposed to know that? Well, we looked at the daily chart, and the daily chart was bearish, so I put on a put option, and the market went up. Yeah, but it was already at the bottom, and it was turning and looked like it was bullish. I don't know why you put on a stupid put option. We should have put on a call. I know, I know, I know. The rebounding land. It's rebounding. Okay, we're getting the breakout on the Russell. And the stupid buy-sell lines are... Getting wonky on this again. Okay, you're getting your four bar breakout. That's what you were looking for, Lan. That's what you were looking for. What are you going to do? 
Well, we got a previous high right here, so I have to be careful. I thought you loved buying on a break above a previous high. No, I said I didn't like to buy on a break above a previous high. You said they go all the time. No, I said they fail a lot. So it's going to go up and test that previous high. If it breaks through it and holds above it, then we could consider taking a long. But I would like to see it go up, break the previous high, pull back, and we'll go on the second run. Oh, that's what you tried last time, and that failed. I know. I know it failed. But we're going to try it again anyway. That's my setup. Just buy right now, Lane. Just buy right now. Buy on the break above the previous high. Scalp out 50 bucks. Come on. That's what David Duty does. He buys on a break above every previous high and scalps out $100. That's what you should do. You should be like David Duty. I know David Duty's a superhero. Superhero scalper. Buy on a break above a previous high, Lan. Buy on a break above a previous high. I don't like to. Just scalp a hundred dollars out on a break above a previous high. Why do you keep trying to catch trends? These markets don't trend. They just scalp, 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 scalp. Look, all the scalp, scalp, scalps. I know, I know. Scalp and trail. What are you going to do, Land? What are you going to do? Look, these markets really aren't moving that far. That whole move right there was a, well, it's not bad. 145 bucks. Keep stretching it out too far. Is it going to pull back? Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six bars. We need a little pullback. We need proof of concept here. But then you'll just have another previous high, and then you'll say, I don't want to buy on a break above a previous high. So why in the hell do you do it? Because I did take this one right here. I did take that one in anticipation of a break above a previous high and a continuation, but just didn't go. It died. It created this little triangle formation. Yes, but then it broke out of your triangle formation. So why didn't you take that one? You even drew a line on there and said you were going to take it on a break above this one here. You said you were going to take it right there on a break above that break, that line. You didn't do it because you were like, oh, it's going to go up and test that previous high and return and fail. But that's the previous high. I know. I know. Just take the arrow, land. Just take the arrow. Why don't you just take the arrow? The arrow came in right on the break above your previous high, just like you were saying right in here on the lower inside bar. You even drew a line on there and said, take it right there. That would be your buy signal. Why didn't you do it? Stop harassing me. Okay, we got lower high. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean to you, Lan? What does it mean that you have a lower high? I don't have a lower low. I just have a lower high. Doesn't really mean a lot. It just means that we've got a little weakening on the upside. Does it mean you want to go long right here? Yes, it does. It means I want to go long right there. Why don't you do it then? Get it in there. You just broke the previous high. Take one more. Okay, scalp and trail land. Scalp and trail. Where are you going to put it? Well, now it's got to break above that previous high, and then it's got to go up. Why well, you got two stops in there? Well, I'm going to put one on price bars back. And then I got one on, on the ATR. So we can be a little bit more aggressive with one and a little bit less aggressive with the other. But it's not even a break even yet. You should have both of them right there at one price bar back. If it doesn't just go in your favor immediately, just get out. Why are you going to risk a, a larger loss? I just need the market to move, all right? It's been moving, and you're just not taking those trades. You wait too long. I want to wait for a confirmation. The confirmation isn't coming because it's too short. You just need to start scalping a little bit more. 
quit trying to catch a big long trend. There's no long trend in here. Just scalp. <sighs> every time you get in, land. Every time you get in, the market doesn't go. Okay, we're breaking above, trying to break above a previous high here. I thought you hated to buy on a break above a previous high. I know, but it's always a break above a previous high. It's just which break above a previous high do you think it's going to go on? Okay, we got a scalp coming up. Going to do a little scalping trail here. You going to leave that one clear back there on that range bar too? You got that thing pretty loose. That'd be a long trend. That'd be, a, and it's already gone ten bars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve bars. What makes you think it's going to trail trend that far? Well, these are range bars. Remember, it's not a one minute chart. It's a range bar. Take it, land. Take it. It's not going to take it. It's not going to go. It's going to flush back down. You're going to miss it again. You're going to miss it again. You're going to miss it again. Get your stop up in there. Take something. It's going to go. It'll go. Watch. It'll pop up. Come on. Come on, baby. Don't prove me wrong here. Ah, uh, you rotten dog. Oh, yeah. It comes back and stops you out just as it would have gone up and hit your limit. You sucked your stop up in there too quick, Land. Why did you put your stop up in there? I told you to hold it back at break even. No, you didn't. You told me to put my stop up in there. Quit, 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 quit with the lies. Okay, I got this one at break even. We'll just leave that one at break even. All right, so this is our trail. So we did our scalp and trail. So now I'll come in here, edit this. What do we want to trail it on? Do we want to trail it on the yellow dots? They're a long ways back. Market have to go quite significantly just to start trailing once again. Yes, but these are range bar tens. I could trail it one bar back, but then you get one little tail come down and it takes you out. You only have one contract. You could put a second one on, but then it would dollar cost average into my position up and that would bring my break even up. Well, what are you doing? You got your window open. You going to make a decision or not? I haven't decided. Still waiting. Well, will it execute your order if that window's open? It will. I can leave this open. It's not going to hurt anything. What are you going to do, Lan? What are you going to do? Starting to go. You going to trail? You going to trail? You going to trail one bar up? You going to take it? You going to bring your scalp in? Scalp and trail, land. What are you going to do? Scalp and scalp or scalp and trail? You're up 72 bucks. You're down 210 on your rotten option. You'd finally got your, all your money back and made a little profit on your day trading today. At least you're not, at least you're not red on your day trading. You're just red on your option. And I'm not worried about the option. I got all day on the option. What are you going to do, Lan? You have still got your stupid window open. What are you going to do? I'm waiting to see if it breaks above that previous high and holds. Is it going to hold above that previous high? Why don't you just take it right now? That's $97. You could take that off right now. Well, that's not scalp and trail. That's scalp and scalp. Yes, but we talked about this. I thought you were going to start doing a little bit more scalping, scalping rather than scalping and trailing because the trailing hasn't been working for you. I know, and just when you stop trailing, that's when it takes off and goes to the moon, and you say, I should have been scalping and trailing. You're at $92. It's breaking a previous high. Just suck your stop up in there so that if it falls back, well, of course it's going to... Ah. Look, at least start trailing. Okay, we'll trail price bars back. All right. Where are you going to put your limit order? Take profit. Well, this isn't the take profit one. This is the trail. This is the scalp and trail. We already scalped one out. Now we need to let it trail. Yeah, but look how high it is. It's getting extended up there. Why don't you just take your profits? 150 bucks. That's good trade right there. Take that off. Take it. David Duty would take it off right now. I'm not David Duty. I don't know, but David's a good trader. He scalps. He's a scalper. Yeah, but you've seen how many times I've seen David get in at an arrow right here, and he gets in and takes off $100, and then he could have made $500 if he'd have just let one run.
Scalp and trail land, scalp and trail. Take it. It's dying. Look, look at your mini chart up there in the top right. If it falls, oh, just get out. That take it, land. Take it. Just uh, move your stop up. It did automatically. Take it, land. It's it's gonna come back. Oh, three flat bottom bars and it's stopping. Oh, land, just take it off. Take it. Take the money and run. Take it. Take it. You can get back in later. Just take it, land. Take it. Be David Duty. Scalp it out. Scalp it out. Scalp it out. Okay. We're off. We're done. Exit. Delete all. Boom. Uh -huh. Back to Dow 10. Range bar 10s. We were on those range bar 6s, and they were a little bit too fast. Today. We slow down in the afternoon. We can go back to range bar 6. Look at that NASDAQ. Holy cow. Look at the Dow up here, breaking a little, making a little ABC pattern. That's our little pullback pattern right there. That's a range bar 10. We're range bar 10 on Russell too. Buy it land. Take it, take it, take it. ABC land, ABC. Look at this, ABC. Take it land. That's going to go to the moon. Yeah, but look at the MACD. Let me show you something here. This is what's making me concerned about getting in long right here. We're on the back side of the MACD. See how the MACD went up there? It's all green, 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 green. And then it went red. Yes, but it's going to go red and then go green again. It's going to go green again. Good. Get in there. Just, just put one on. Why? Why don't you take it? Take it. Take it. Just put one on. Just put one on, man. Just put one on. Just just one bar back, man. Just take it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Put it on there. Put it on there. Why are you not putting it on there? Why are you so worried? Just put it on there. Wait, wait. It's going to go. You know it is. Look, this went like that. 10 bars, 20 bars. Pull back. It's going to do it again. It's going to do it again. ABC land. ABC. 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 ABCD. Come on, land. I told you to get in. Now it's going again. Why are you waiting? The earlier you get in, the better. Why are you waiting? Just get in. waiting why why are you waiting so i don't think it's going to go straight up to the moon i think we're going to get a little pullback we might even get a reversal a little break here this little abc top so one two three top formation right here could turn flush and come back down the fibonacci scale all the way back down into the fibonacci sweet spot Got to break above that previous high and hold above it. Give us another opportunity to get in for the next long position. This right here is just an ABC top formation. It could fail and come back down. Yeah, but what about long ABCD, ABCD? I mean, no, I know. I see it. Just don't know what it's going to do. A lot of indecision right here. First red candle to make a new low that we would take a short position right here. Well, then take it. Take it. Is that red candle? Hasn't closed yet. It's not red yet. Are you going to take it? Look, it just could be a little ABC to the upside. Could be a little ABC, little pullback. And that's your opportunity to take another long position. Land, this market's bullish. You're in a bullish market. You're looking for a reversal. Reversals are dangerous. Don't trade reversals. How many times have you told us not to trade, trade reversals? In fact, you published an article in Pitt News Magazine that said, don't trade reversals, Lan. What? What's Pitt News Magazine? That's my magazine. We got the January issue came out, and it's a beautiful issue. 
I love the January issue. You guys should all come subscribe to Pit News Magazine. You get one full year for only $49.95, and you get the first three months free. Actually, not free. $1. $1 for three issues just to see if you like it. If you like it, you can keep it. If you don't like it, you cancel it, and you don't pay the $50 for the whole year. You get three full issues for $1 just to see if you like it. Go over to pitnews.com, sign up, $1. You get three issues. The great thing about the magazine, it's all this great stuff we're talking about in here, we put in the magazine so that you can have them, all right? You can listen to the articles, you can read the articles, and you can watch the videos. All right, that's Pit News Magazine. Glad you asked. Thanks for asking. All right. All right, Land, what are you going to do? First green candle, make a new high. First red candle, make a new low. I know, I know. I know, you don't have to tell me. I know. Okay. If it breaks above that one there, that would be your buy signal. Remember last time you drew that same blue line and it took off and you'd have made a whole bunch of money and you didn't buy it and you got mad? Yeah, but I see the same thing to the downside. Break above this one, take your short position, ride it down all the way back to the VWAP, all the way back down to the little blue rubber band. Remember that one? Mark is just going sideways right now. David Lumberg's asking, why are we using range bars versus the one-minute chart? That's a good question, John David Lumberg. The reason I'm using range bars is because I like range bars. <laughs> we got the new feature in the software where we can turn the range bars on on the Heiken and Ashy. So this is actually a range bar chart, John. So this is a range bar chart. This is what a typical normal range bar chart looks like. And so this, sometimes you can look at range bars and the market's really smooth and beautiful and they're nice to trade. And I've got a lot of chart examples out in the portal uh, that you have access to because you are been a class member at the university. Um, so you have access to the portal where we've got all the, the training material. And um, if you guys who aren't at the university want to get access to that training material, you can go over to pitnews.com and you can buy it, get into it. But you have to pay your tuition. There's a little bit of tuition to get in there. John's already paid his tuition. So he's from the university. He's paid his tuition. He's got access to the, to the, um, to the material in there. And in there, there's a lot of videos of me trading range bar charts. Now, Range bars, the markets have caught a little funny lately. They The range bars are not as smooth as they used to be. They used to be really smooth. The markets would kind of trend very smoothly. And you'll notice in a lot of my videos, I use the range bar six. And the markets were very nice and smooth. And we could, I loved them, right? We had lots of great trading examples in there. And then the markets have kind of got choppy. A lot, a lot of choppiness in the markets. And so... I had the Heike and Ashy, had the programmers put Heike and Ashy on the range bars. And they just gave that to us like, what, two weeks ago? I guess I had it. I guess I, I guess they gave it to us a couple months ago. And then I didn't trade with it much. And then I decided to turn it on. So you can see that when you turn the Heike and Ashy on to these range bars, it changes your whole world. And so this is kind of a new feature to us. And so I've been wanting to practice with it a little bit and trade with it a little bit and see if it's not something that can help us. The problem is they move so fast sometimes that the 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 bid and the ask, if, you, if, if you've noticed, is kind of gets a little wonky. That we don't get that on the daily charts, so or on the one minute chart. So if you come back to the one minute chart, you don't get that because they're not as the one minute chart isn't as granular, right? So we don't have that issue. But the the you have the bid, the ask, and the last. Where did the where did the trade last? And then where's the bid and the ask? So the bid and the ask can move around, and I hate it when those get a little bit out. And they we see that on the on the range bars a little bit because they're so so granular. But the bid and the ask change, and then the last is still down here. This is where the last trade took, which is the red line. And you see that move around a little bit. The bid and the ask go up and down a little bit, and I don't like that. But that's what we're seeing here on the range bars. I don't know. And the smaller you make that, the, the worse that exaggerates. And I'm not exactly sure why it does that. But I see it on the range bars because we're getting quite granular, especially on the smaller range bars. You go down to the range bar six, the range bar four, 
sometimes we see that even worse that little the, the bid in the ass jumps around a lot because we're so granular looking down so close and then the last trade kind of is a little bit slower usually those you want to see those i like to see those just kind of right in with each other but i don't know just getting used to something new and so this is a new feature in the software. I thought we'd play with it and see if we could make it. But it was going too fast this morning. You saw me. I couldn't make decisions as fast as it was moving. You get on the wrong tab. By the time I got to the right tab and started pushing the buttons, the thing was gone. And the market was gone. So I had to slow it down. I took it from the range bar 6 up to range bar 10. And that's why David Duty trades range bar 50. You know, I keep talking about David Duty. It's because I love the man. He's a really amazing guy. Been with me for about 30 years. And the two of us are buddies and pals. Well, he trades the range bar 50 because it slows everything way down and he's not, he doesn't have to work as fast. David's, he's an old man. He's as old as dirt. He's older than dirt. David's older than dirt. He's an old guy. <laughs> uh, give David shit. But, you know, he's got to slow the market down because he's such an old man. He can't go fast like me. I'm just a young buck. So I can go faster than he, he can. So he slows the market down with his range bar 50. So he has a little bit more time to think. So, you know, it's all personal preference and where you think you can, where your skills, skill levels at, I guess. And we got this new feature. And so I, that's why I'm playing with it, John. Granular, granular, you know, it's a little more granular. You see smaller moves. The smaller moves are act actuated more. So if it's granular, right? You're seeing the smaller moves. We're getting in tighter. So granular, you got $255, but that's like 20 bars, right? So if we go over to one minute chart, $255 to get $255. That's one minute chart. It's a Russell $255. So that's the same move right there. I don't know. Maybe the range bar 10 is very similar to the one minute chart. Maybe that's why. Let's lay those together. Range bar 10, range bar 10, one minute Russell. Let's bring that over here. So that's our 10. That's our one minute. Look, they look very similar, don't they? Let's um, bring these down, bring this down. Look at our put option is really killing us. What's that one? S and P. That's not what I want to do range bring that one down russell okay let's put those side by side all right so we got a little bit off on our border let's change our border to be the same so let's clear this oh delete delete all right so that is a how about that which one do you like better david let's remove this one So the bottom one is the one minute chart. The top one is the range bar 10 chart. So we can see a little bit more granularity on the range bar when it starts going a little faster than we see on the this here. So on the one minute, this little section here seemed a little more clear than this one, didn't it? We're using 1.15 on the ATR, and we're using 1.15 on the ATR on both on both charts. And look at the difference between the trailing stop location. Seems like on the one minute, it kind of pulls it in a little tighter. A little further back on the range bar. And remember, one minute chart, each bar represents the amount of the market moved in that time frame in one minute. Whereas the range bar, the market has no time involved, so it will only move. It'll only give you a new price bar when the market moves a minimum of 10 moves. So this is why on a, on a minute chart, you can get a really long price bar, right? If that market just flushed and died and went all the way down, then it would flush and you would have an arrow that would point at the next price bar, right? Which would be the close of this bar, which would be way down here. Which is why we also in the autopilot have to have um, thrust bar signal preventer. So right there, thrust bar signal preventer. Don't enter if the market is greater than a certain number of ticks within a certain number of bars. 
And that's because sometimes the market, you've seen it, uh, the market will go, one bar will be enormous, huge, right? Whereas on the range bar, that can't happen. So a range bar, what will happen is it'll break that one big long bar up into a whole bunch of bars. And you're like, well, what's the advantage of that? Well, the advantage of that is that if you're trailing one price bar back on your software and it breaks that one bar up into 10 bars, it'll, it'll trail down 10 times before the other one will only move once. So that's one advantage of the, of the range bars. It breaks up those big long bars into individual little tiny bars. And that's one of the reasons why I like range bars. But if you get down too small, too small a time frame, then they move really fast and they jump all over the place and we run into problems. But that's only if the market's moving really fast. So when the market's moving really fast on a range bar, you want to extend the time. You want to have, you know, give it a larger range. But if the market's slow, like in the afternoon, you start trading at one o'clock in the afternoon then the market doesn't go anywhere. It's a little slower. You can bring those range bars down and you don't have the granularity problem. So hopefully that's just kind of my thoughts on range bars, but it's something we have to practice with and test and see if we like it and kind of dial it in and figure out what we want. I don't have all the answers. I just, you know, working with you here to try and come up with some of the answers that, to figure out, you know, I got a little bit of experience with this stuff, but I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything. I almost know everything, but I don't know everything. <laughs> There's so much I don't know. These markets are so crazy and so many different things of ways of doing the same thing. All we can do is just come in here and do our best. So let's bring these markets back up. Let's see. We don't need, which one don't we need? We don't need this one. Let's put this one back up here. We don't need the one minute Russell. We're going to kill the one minute Russell for now. We're just still going to stick with the, doesn't mean we're, we don't like one minute Russell. We certainly do. We've had good luck with one minute charts. Been trading lots of one minute charts my whole life, right? Actually not my whole life. Day trading like this is actually, as far as, day trading is concerned some of us old guys that have been around a long time this is new this is relatively new stuff i mean being able to trade like this on a one minute chart day trading click the button actually have the order feel like in seconds that's like totally amazing to us you know i remember when we had to we started off with paper charts right and then we had to actually call people on the telephone to get our orders filled and you know having this internet thing what you know where you can carry your internet in your pocket all that stuff it's all new stuff so this is all cutting edge technology all this stuff we're doing here is all brand new so you know this isn't how i traded for 30 years i didn't have this this is all new it's only been able to do this for the last five years or six years or seven seven years something like that ten years maybe i don't know how long have we had intraday day trading charts but we certainly every day i mean we got a whole team of programmers that are sitting down there and up there in logan utah working on this stuff every single day to make this better and better and of course you know there's the weak link sometimes we have to hook up to the to the um hook up to the uh the clearing firm and we have to wait for them to develop stuff they're they're a lot bigger than we are so we're a lot more nimble and we can do things more quickly Whereas they're huge and it takes them a long time to make decisions to do stuff. So we have to kind of wait on them. Like for one example is multi-leg options and futures. We had, we had that technology four, three, four years ago in the stock market, right? Because the clearing firm we were dealing with had the ability to do that. Well, our futures clearing firm didn't. So even though we had the technology and track and trade in one of our other versions, we couldn't put it into the futures market because we had to wait for the clearing firm to give us that capability. And the clearing firm finally gave us that capability. And it's one of the reasons we can now do multi-leg options trading in the futures market. It wasn't because we couldn't do it. It was because our clearing firm couldn't do it. So we had to wait for them. We had to wait for the technology to catch up. And that's been a lot of this, you know, a lot of this stuff that we do is just new technology, trying stuff, seeing what we can do 
creating new user interfaces for it. A lot of different companies work with the same clearing firm, right? And they created a different user interface to deal with how to, how they're going to trade um, multi-leg options. And they might have come up with a totally different way of doing it. So ours is all drag and drop and visual and represented on the screen and all that kind of stuff, right? We, I'm a very visual trader, so I like to see the visual nature of the market. A lot of other companies, they did it different ways. But now, you know, and some of them haven't even done it yet. There's a lot of companies that deal with our same clearing firm. They still don't have multi-leg options on futures. We were kind of ahead of the game because we'd already done it in our other software for the other clearing firm. And so we were able to, to move rapidly once we got the capability at the clearing firm level. <clears throat> All right. So that Dow, we're looking at the range bar on the Dow. So now that started to fall. See, that's why I didn't take that long position in there. I wouldn't, wasn't trusting it to the upside. And that means that if we come over here and look, our s &P, it's starting to fall. So now I'm going to anticipate we could come in and mitigate with this one. So we could come in here. We could buy another put. So now I've dollar cost averaged my option. And so now as this market continues to fall, these two will probably meet in the middle somewhere. And I can get out of them at least with break even, right? I don't necessarily have to make money on it. It was the wrong decision, obviously, to buy a put option at the open. And the market rallied instead of fail. Well, now we're buying one right up in here at the top is this curl on the market. So we got the, the MACD starting to curl and fall over. We got the, the stochastics is starting to curl and fall over. This market looks like it wants to start to fall. So now it's basically dollar cost averaging with an option. Is it dangerous? Yeah, it's a dangerous because now I have two of them. And if the market turned and went long again, I'd be down two. So I don't really want to do that. I don't want to take a bigger risk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to mitigate like I've done in the past, right? like we did several weeks ago. For those of you who are watching, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to hook those two together. What do you mean hook them together, Lan? I'm going to hook them together and put them on the same ticket because right now they're on separate tickets. This is multi-leg options capabilities that we haven't had until just like recently. So now we're going to come in here and we got the ability to take these two options that are sitting out here independently and combine them and put them on the same order. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to say, manually link the options so manually link and we're going to come in here grab this one add to the single leg so now we've got both of these on the same ticket i hit apply actually apply and close and you'll see now that i now have two options on the same ticket and it, uh, visually it draws a line between them see that little line right there draws that line between them and so now they're hooked together and they become one so now what we can do is we can place orders like what advantage is that you still have two orders yes but they're combined on one ticket so now I can put an order in that says, if they get back to break even, just take it off. So how do you do that? Come in here and say, liquidate the multi-leg. I have a little calculator over here. Now this is very unique to track and trade. I've been looking around to see if other companies do this. And I haven't seen a lot of other companies do this. Um, but you can come in here and you can say, okay, I want to set up my, my, um, my liquidate option. So right now we're at a loss of 30%. We're down $265 combined. It's coming back in our favor, but when it gets back to break even, I want to just take it off. Now, of course, you can do this for a profit as well if you wanted to do it for a profit. But at this point, I just want to get my money back. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start running this down. And I'm oh, going the wrong way. So I want to have it, my net loss actually go to a positive number, right? I want my net loss to be less. So I'm going to run that up. And that's where the market would have to go to to get to a net loss of 0%. So I'm going to run that up. So my net loss right now is, that would be 0%. That would be a profit actually, a point. So there would be break even. So if the market gets to 1725, gives me 1725, that's the bid and the ask, then I would have a spread, it's saying a spread of 245, but that's actually just to bring me back to profitability. So it's kind of a way of, tricking the market all right we're tricking the market by saying i'm making an offer and the bid and the ask and i'm making an offer at this much and they're going to say no way i'm not giving it to you but eventually if the market falls in my favor far enough it might get to a point where they're going to say hey that's within my bid ask range and that's going to be profitable for me to to 
fill that order for you and they're going to do it. And I will actually get out of the market with a, I'm going to take a little bit more than that because I got to cover commissions and fees. So we're going to put $5 in there. We'll put seven fifty. So if it gets, makes me seven fifty, they'll cover commissions and fees on my two orders or close enough. We'll probably need it actually to 10, make $10. There we go. That would be a 1.16% return or receive $870 which would be the combined profit of these two, which would bring me back to break even, which would be 200. I'm down $282 right now. So I would receive 870, which would means it would give me back some of my premium. That's not going to be the profit I make. I have premium in the market. They're going to give it back to me and they're going to give that back to me with a profit of not actually a profit, but profit on one, a loss on the other dollar cost average make me $10 in profit, pay my commissions and fees, and I'd be out of the position with a scratch trade. See how that works? So now we're going to go ahead and we're just going to market order into this. Oh, I didn't monitor. Oh, that was a mistake. Rookie mistake. I can't believe I did that. I'm so used to market ordering in. That was, should have been a limit order, and I hit a market order. And it was already set for limit order. So how do I? That was a mistake teaching you all that and then i screwed up at the end and marketed out of it so how can i teach you how i did that can't do it now i'm gonna have to do it tomorrow well we could do it we could come in here and we're gonna say okay we're gonna sell a put or we're gonna buy a put we're gonna buy a put i'm gonna do it right at the money uh, we don't have it at the money we have it near the money 400 300 oh the market's going up but i want to buy it right now and then I could do the same thing. I just didn't need it to go back down to the to the VWAP. Uh, I want to do that. I just want to example it to you. Hey, let's try it. We're going to go in. I'm going to mark it into this one. Now it's getting out that I don't want to mark it out. Okay, so I mark it in, so I got it. So now I'm going to come in here, right-click, liquidate option. Run this down until it's showing a profit. Now we'll minus, and now we're going to go into a profit. We have to make 167.50 plus 750 plus commission. So we're going to go up to 160.70. Let's go up to 175 profit. One. And it's going to be less likely to do it because I've only got one option now instead of two. I screwed up. So let's say we need to make $175. So if we do $175, let's do 180. Okay, now I have a net profit, 62%, 180. Likelihood of that market is going to have to drop quite significantly to do that. We're going to screw this up. Okay, now it's a limit order. I shouldn't have done market order. And now I hit place. And now it's going to got a pending order to take that off when I hit that much money. It's just a limit order. It's really all we're placing on there. And I hit market order, made a mistake. That was a mistake. All right. So I bought another put option. Is that market still going to go against us? But I wanted to show you how that works. We'll see. We'll mitigate it. All right, guys. I'm going to let you go. First day back. We did okay with our day trading. We didn't do great. But um, now we're down $167 on our options, which closed out that closed position. But we'll see. Probably end up with a red day today. But we'll try it. See if we can't get this back on the option. And I'm going to let you go. We will catch you guys tomorrow. Same, same, same time, same place. And if you have any questions, let me know.